The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to this week's episode of The Ash Holes, broadcast live from the Serena Royale Studios at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. It's time to kick back and light up as we turn every Wednesday into Ash Wednesday. It's always entertaining, always unscripted, and totally unfiltered. You can stream and download us on iHeartRadio, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, and Podbean, and of course, at theashholes.net. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at The Ash Holes, and on Instagram at Ash Holes Radio. Uh, Oliver, again, is traveling this week. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. <laughs> it always gives us more time to talk and have some fun together. Yeah. It's very good. And today we are smoking Julius Caesar. We are smoking the Julius Caesar Toro by J.C. Newman's, put out by Diamond Crown Cigars. And it is a fantastic, fantastic cigar. Oh, yes. So, how have you been this week? Doing great. Yeah? Yeah, back to work. You know, I had some time off vacation. Now we're back in full swing. Yep. So, I'm already ready for a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Labor Day is finally over. The kids are actually having their first full week at school. Yeah. Which is really, really good for me and the missus. And, um, <laughs> you know, my wife, is, you know, she had... Um, a total knee replacement surgery about a month ago, and you know she's got another. Uh, well, to, through the end of the month, I think. So she has a, a faux knee now. She has a faux knee. A faux knee. Yeah, knee. she's bionic. Okay. Yeah, and um, she's really getting along really, really good. And you know, now we're able to kind of get caught up on some housework and stuff like that. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I work a, a lot. I have two jobs, mm-hmm. and. Um, so, you know, when you have my kids, you know, the, uh, you know, 13, 15, 11, you know, wherever they go, especially my 13 year old who, Anna, who has, you know, she's her own special little kid. She's like a nuclear bomb wherever she goes, you, know, <laughs> you just know where she's been, just follow the mess, um, you know? And so now we're getting, you know, into the, uh, getting the house back in order mode and that's, that's doing really good. Sounds good. That's doing really And tonight is uh, Dave Garofalo's anniversary Oh, yes. Dinner. Looking forward to that. Oh, my gosh. I'm I've been looking be forward there. to it for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be there working it. You're going to be there enjoying, enjoying it. Enjoying yep. it. You know, I wish I could be you. This will be my first one. I didn't make it the last year. You didn't make No, but this, I've, I've not been before. You've so. not been before. Well, it is, it is a fantastic thing. There's nothing else like it. And it's cool. great food, and you know, 300 people are going to be there, mm-hmm. and... Uh, there's a big, huge uh, prize that's being given away. It's a big right. man cave. That's right, yeah. Yep. You could be coming away with that. Yeah, yeah. I've got nowhere to put it. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have the land to put it on, I'm like, well. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, you know, to you know, kind of give me some time to light this up and kind of get into this cigar. Um, let me ask you something. Where Where's your favorite place to smoke? Is it at home? Is it in a lounge or, you know, a cigar bar? You know, where where do you really enjoy smoking cigars? I know you kind of like to do it alone. That's your thing. Mm-hmm. You're the, yep. the, the yeah, I, introvert's I, introvert. Yep. You know? Yeah, I like to, you know, I really like, you know, I'll find a nice field. I'll get, yeah, I have a chair that I always bring in my car, you know, that I unfold. Mm-hmm. And I'll just sit out, you know, nice scenery, you know, especially in the fall now that's coming up with the foliage. Mm-hmm. Just sitting back, you know, I get my Kindle out, you know, do some reading. That's like my go-to. That's my unwind is sitting out in nature, enjoying a cigar, doing some reading, getting away from people. Now, it's, <laughs> fun, it's funny you say that because I also keep a fold-up chair in my trunk. Yeah, it's there all year round. For all me, year round. And it never I, have, I have it in there. And <laughs> if I ever need it, because there is nothing like sitting out in nature in the woods enjoying a cigar. My favorite place to smoke is, is my um, – back porch oh, yeah. I, have a, I have a screened three three season porch basically so you know it can be raining it could be doing whatever you know 
but it's, you know, and I've got these older um, leather chairs that are out there. You're outside. You don't want nice leather stuff no, out no, there. No. And I have kids, so I don't really. <laughs> it's pointless to have nice furniture. Yeah. And so, nice and, and cats, temporary. too. So, you know, oh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you know, it's just nice to, to sit out there, relax, you know, recline. A couple, one, of, one of these uh, little couches is a recliner and just sit back and just hear the crickets, hear the frogs. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're in a uh, kind of a woodsy kind of area where I am. And I, that's my favorite place to have watch the, the trees blow in the wind yeah. and yeah. The clouds go by. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the go-to. I think my favorite is when it's raining, like in the summertime yep. and to have that all around you. Cause it's a, it's a, you know, three, you know, three walls are, are, you know, the, uh, screened in mm -hmm. and then the, the back wall is actually a, a fireplace that is on the other side of the, you know, inside the house. And it's just, so you just it's surrounded by the rain, and uh, I, I love that. It's so mm -hmm. relaxing. Yep, I like and auditory. You know, you, you mm -hmm. hear the the raindrops, you hear everything. It's mm -hmm. just a full experience. Yeah. Yep. So is it ever too cold? Do you think? <sighs> well, you see, that's the, the thing. Smoke, some like, people, you, all some year people round, will or? go outside all year round, and they'll they'll get out there and they'll uh, mm -hmm. and they'll they'll freeze their little tukuses off and and have a little cigar. You know, I, I'm good being out by a fire. You know, I, I like being out. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the campfire or a, you know, some people have those um, uh, butane, yep. or you know, yep. one of those one heaters, of those butane yeah. heaters or whatever out there, and that's that's all well and good. But you know, I don't like being cold, and, and for that reason, I, I feel like I'm in the wrong part of the country yeah you know yeah. winter is not my thing i am not a winter guy it could be summer all year long i lived in orlando for five years when i was in oh, school I, I couldn't handle that and i Humidity loved it. would kill me well you know <laughs> it, it, it it does get really humid but i mean you know so from uh, you know the middle part of may to you know around september you're you're in turmoil if humidity is your th is, oh, is your nemesis, that's but true. the rest of the year, those other eight months, 75, 80 degrees, sunny, the humidity's not bad at all. <laughs> you and say just, not bad. It's fantastic, and you know your yeah. body adjusts. You know one of the great things about Florida is when it gets to 95, you know for summer, mm -hmm. it stays 95, like every day. And every day, I three, it'll rain like for 15 hell. or 20 minutes. <laughs> and I, I sweat at the drop of my hat, so I'd probably I do die too. I, I, I sweat. So, but, you know, everybody, you know, has a pool. Everything's air conditioned. But your body adjusts because every day it's the same thing. Here, and we've already experienced this, you know, last week it was, you know, barely 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. You know, then yesterday was 80-something, 80-something, almost yeah. 90. Humid. Today's back in well, the 70s. You know, tomorrow's in the 80s, and then it's, you know, it, it, it's just, you back don't know what you're going to get. You don't know what you get. Yeah. So, in the wintertime, I am not outside smoking cigars. I have, right on the other side of the screen and porch, is a, a huge fireplace, and, you know, my house is really old. It was built in 1780. So this is one of those, this was the kitchen fireplace. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very high. And so we have some uh, chairs sitting around there. We'll put a fire in the fireplace. And once that updraft is going, the smoke just shoots right up the chimney in that room, man. And it's just awesome. See, I will go out in the cold. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of outdoor stuff. So I, get, I have the appropriate gear to stay warm. I mean, I'm not smoking a, like a, you know, a Churchill or anything right, like that. Right. I'll do a short format, you know, like a right. uh, firecracker or something like that. Something that's going to take under 30 minutes, right. so somewhere around that range. Uh, and I'll be, you know, I'm not going to be shivering out there, but I'm going to enjoy it because I do like, I like the scenery of being, I hate snow. But at the same time, I do like being out there when it's, right. not when it's actively snowing, but when <laughs> you got the light, you know, the, the sun bouncing off the snow and things like that. Or I'll go snowshoeing yeah. and I'll have a cigar out yeah. there, and, you know, set up my chair and, you know, make a little clearing and sit out. Uh, so, yeah, the, the cold's not going to stop me. It can be but, very pretty. I admit it. But I definitely do spend more, much more time in the lounge in the winter than in the right. summer. Yeah. So. yeah. And, and that's one of the great gifts of being able to work in a cigar shop. Yeah. It doesn't matter what's going on outside. 
I get to be smoking a cigar. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's like the winter time. That's when we reconnect with all the, the regulars, right? <laughs> the, right. the guys that you know. And, <laughs> oh, hey, they, they, we're all here. <laughs> so. right, right, right. Now, cigar shop or cigar bar. You know, I don't spend much time in cigar bars. You don't? Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, just bars in general, it's not my kind of scene. You know, I enjoy a, a drink, but I right. it's, you know, the social aspect of it. You know, I don't have, I'll have a, a friend that I'll go out, you know, grab a drink with or something like that. But it's not like a go-to locale for me. It's just, right, right. just not just not my just scene. Not you. I don't know. Yeah. It's not, not something I got into. So, it's, you know, I'll, I'll probably come visit you at the <laughs> cigar yeah, bar yeah, at some should. point. That's yeah, I, I plan on stopping in at some point. But, it's, a nice, you know, it's a nice place. But it's not my, my go-to. Right. So I, I would say lounge for sure. And, okay. I mean, I live close to the lounge here. So <laughs> that's, right. that's another thing. That's right. Don't have to drive How far. far of a drive is it? It's not like two miles away. Two miles away. Yeah, oh, so that's awesome. So that's, that's why great. I'm here. So Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's convenient. <laughs> well, today we're smoking the Diamond Crown Julius Caesar which honors uh, J.C. Newman, Julius Caesar Newman, uh, who was the founder of the J.C. Newman Cigar Company. And um, uh, he and his family sailed, you know, here in search of the American dream in 1888. And in 2010, he created uh, uh, the Diamond Crown um, Julius Caesar, which we're smoking. The J.C. is the Julius Caesar. Caesar. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And... Um, they're rolled uh, in very small batches at the Fuente factory in the Dominican Republic. And it's got a, um, the Toro here has a, uh, is a six by 52. It's got a, an Ecuadorian Havana um, uh, wrapper around a Nicaraguan binder and, uh, Nic- I mean, Honduran binder, Nicaraguan filler, excuse me. And uh, it's just a wonderful, very flavorful, medium bodied cigar. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very rich. And there are a number of different sizes. There's the Robusto, uh, the Toro, Churchill, and, um, and there's, the a, the, there's a, yeah, Figurado, which <laughs> is only av- only available at Diamond Crown Lounge stores. You can't find those just everywhere. But that's a great, that that's a great, great cigar, too. So what are our, what are, what are our first impressions on I this? mean, when you first light up, you get nut right mm-hmm. off the bat. There's no mistaking that. That's that nutty flavor. Uh, now it's picking up some more, like, uh, spices, mm-hmm. you know, it's hard to place just to, you know in this first inch, but you know you get the nuttiness and some spice that's starting to build and up. And there's a sweetness too. Yes, to it, right. There's not not overly sweet, not like mm-hmm. a chocolate or anything like that. But no. there is that that sweetness. To me, it's like a molasses kind of a sweet. Yeah, that kind of realm. Yeah, and um, it's just a very very tasty cigar. Um, again, mine's burning very well. There weren't any soft spots on this baby. Nope. Um, just a great, great cigar. And really, when you first take it out of the wrap, uh, it's the cello. It, you know, has this sweetness. If you smell the wrapper itself, it has kind of like almost a, a floral kind of scent to it. Yeah. Which yeah. is 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 not very typical. You don't see it too often. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, it's really pleasant. In that that cold draw, you get that same kind of flavor. That right, almost right. floral. It doesn't really carry through when you once you light it, but it is. No. It is an interesting aspect. Yeah, I agree with that. And just a very oily wrapper. It's got a great, great oily sheen to it. It's a veiny kind of cigar, mm-hmm. but it uh, doesn't affect the construction or anything at all. Nope. It's just a, a great straight burn. You can see that there. And, uh, and that band. It, I love Such the a band. great looking band. Yeah, and that is actually That's a likeness Newman, of J.C. Newman, not yep. actually Julius Caesar. The, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's dressed up <laughs> like him. He's dressed up like him, but that's, a, that's a depiction of J.C. Newman. Okay. Yeah, and it's interesting, you know, you look at the, how they spell this, you know, Caesar is usually, you know, uh, spelled uh, C-A-E-S-A-R, but on the cigar, it's E-R. And that's because is, when, he, when he came over, you know, when, when they uh, did all the signing, making him a, uh, a citizen, yes, yeah, yep. they misspelled. They misspelled the name, which and they <laughs> just kept it. I mean, there's so many names out there. I mean, my name, my last name they didn't, mm-hmm. is because of the same name. Pretty much reason. What, what was from, it supposed to be? Uh, oh gosh, I don't know. You don't even, <laughs> but but it, it, well, how can you say it? Changed well, if you be, don't know what it was. Because, well, I know like the, the the Gaelic that it came from was on mm-hmm. only I can't pronounce it, but it's it's a lot of vowels. Gaelic um, is hard to pronounce. Yeah, it's hard to pronounce. I, and I've got no, no expertise. But uh, it, there's also like all these other families with different spellings of Noonan with, with like an N U instead of an O O mm-hmm. uh, that basically came from the same family. So it's just it happens. 
Yes, it does. It does. So um, great cigar here. Um, very rich. It's. Um, I do almost pick up kind of a, a cocoa quality from the cigar. Okay. Yeah, like a, but not like a chocolate. Not cocoa. chocolate. So it's cocoa. got like the yeah. unrefined right. ba baking chocolate. Right. Or right. Baking, that room. baking chocolate or something. Yep. I I can pick that up for sure. Mm -hmm. And the retro is very very nice. Very, very smooth. Very yeah. smooth. Very cedary. Not peppery at all. It's got a wonderful aroma. Mm. It's very, very nice. I'm actually getting a little bit of the floral on that, the mm -hmm. retro. The, yeah, I can smell the floral on the, you know, on, the, on the, yeah. Just the aroma of the cigar puts off the ring note. It's really, really great on this. Mm. Um, what are What's a cigar that you smoked in this last week there? So I actually went with a, one that I hadn't had in a little while. It was the Asylum 13 Connecticut. The Asylum 13 Connecticut? Yeah. You're, now, I'm interested what size you... <laughs> took because you are not a big ring gauge. I am guy. not, but I, I did. I went with the six by sixty. You went with the six sixty. Uh, mainly because you know I went back and forth. I had the robusto, which is the five by fifty, and then the six by sixty, and you know it just the five by fifty is just it's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's like a you know pretty much a normal size robusto. Yeah, yeah. But it just looks just minuscule to it. So I was like, I'm going with the sixty. Okay. You know, it, it for you know a sixty ring gauge. I mean, if you're gonna go with a, a larger ring gauge, you, you should. An asylum is the way to go. Right. They've, yeah. They've they kind of paved the way. Everyone's kind of followed their way. You know, we talked to right. Austin Aurora a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, and you know they, they nailed it. You know, and the Connecticut is you know when I'm going for more of a, a milder smoke, uh, you know that's that's kind of my go-to. Um, I don't go to it too often, mm -hmm. but I always, whenever I do go back to it, I'm always like, oh, why don't I smoke this more often? And it's usually because of the 60 ring gauge, mm -hmm. but <laughs> uh, you know it's got some. Uh, very creamy yep. and licorice. Like cream and licorice are kind of like the big notes that I get out of it. Yeah, so like once you get past like that first third, you pick up that licorice note and mm -hmm. it, it just melt. It you know plays really well with the cream. Mm -hmm. uh, you know I love licorice, the black licorice okay. flavor. You know, like, and like a moxie the soda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. for the old timers uh, yeah, that know it. Definitely, <laughs> it's I, I dig the whole moxie thing. Yeah. yeah, and it's just, you know, it stays consistent right all the way through. Mm -hmm. You know, you can nub it, and it doesn't get, you know, too Everybody bad seeks that. asylum. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How many going to take me away? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, great smoke. All right. Um, I did a, uh, a Last Call Chiquitas, uh, the Habano version of that. It's an Ecuadorian Habano Rosado wrapper and a Nicaraguan filler and binder on that cigar. It's a little three and a half by 50. Uh, so it's you know firecracker size yep. cigar made to be um, the last smoke of the day right made short, to be the last smoke of the day out. and I, I have really come to enjoy those a lot they you know both uh, the Habano and the Maduro I find very enjoyable cigars and they're very reasonably priced and mm -hmm. if you're looking for something that's a quicker smoke or a last smoke or cold um, weather smoke cold yeah. weather <laughs> smoke you know uh, and sometime in, in the upcoming weeks we'll be doing a show on that we'll yep. do some cold weather smokes. We'll do some shorter cigars um, that uh, we'd recommend for those 20, 30 minute jaunts outside. Um, but leather, spice, cedar, some even some coffee to mm -hmm. it. Very, very good cigar. Very enjoyable. It lasts about 30 minutes. And um, uh, it's a, another cigar with a finished foot. We talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the, the presentation on that cigar looks really great. Um, I love it with a cup of coffee, you know, so it's a great, for me, it's just as well as the first cigar of the day mm -hmm. as the last cigar of the day. Uh, I, I'm not one of these people that, you know, starts off with like, oh, let's have a mild cigar because it's before 10 a.m. I go for something, you know, medium or medium plus right off, mm -hmm. the, right off the top. See, I find, and I've probably said this before, but it's like earlier in the day, the, the nicotine affects me more. Okay. So it's like if I were to go with a stronger cigar, I'd be toasted. <laughs> <laughs> it, there's something about it, like there's a certain time of day, and it's probably with the amount of food I've had that day right. that it just it just hits me, and it's like mm -hmm. in the afternoon, it's like I can smoke whatever, and I'll be fine. But it's like if it's before noon, and I'm like, oh, yeah. just feeling it. I'm, no. well, it just, it just it, it. you know, for such a, sh a short smoke, it just helps 
really leave you very relaxed. It just you can just feel the stress, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the the aroma, the the flavors are just it's just enough to kind of kickstart the day or to kick up your feet and end the day. Mm -hmm. So for me. so I, you mentioned you know doing a show on short format in a couple of weeks or in the future, right? Coming. Speaking of the future, we have the one year coming up. Right? Yes. The, the one year yes. anniversary of the Ashholes. I can't even believe it's just around the corner. It's, it's, it's a few basically away, a month huh? away. Yeah. The 15th of November. Wow. It's yeah. going to be our one year anniversary. Creeping up. Oh. So what should we do? Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a good point. We already know. did naked, so we're, we, we're, yeah, we're not doing naked way. again. Yeah. We're not doing naked again. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, we started, you know, we're in the same room, but it was uh, the, the first episode was me and um, uh, Derek Stewart mm -hmm. and, and these two leather high back chairs <laughs> talking cigars. I'll have to go back and look. You know, I have a setting list the of tone done for the lounge so, field. You know, like setting, up, <laughs> setting the tone for that. And, you know, now look around. We've got this great stage and, and uh, Sereno is, is one of our sponsors and just a fantastic, fantastic. And, you know, now the you know there's coffee lounge out in front here. Oh yeah, it's just it's amazing. Grown miles, yeah, by no will of our own. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pastor Padrones, thou shalt not. Uh, and this kind of came came to me from an experience I had this last week. Uh, Pastor Padrones, thou shalt not. Thou shalt not put your cigar in your mouth and go like this. And then ask me for my cutter. Because I'm going to say no. No. Oh, why? You know? People, you know, I don't know why <laughs> people do it. People, people, before they cut their cigar, some people will put it in their mouth and they'll lick it, lick it all up and get it nice and wet. <sighs> and I don't know why that is. Maybe they think it's going to cut better. Yeah. Maybe they think it's going to be, you know, uh, you know, are they... I have no idea why people do it. Maybe preserving then, the cap or something. Then ask for somebody else's cutter, whether it be the store cutter or, you know, where you're, whether you're smoking or whether it be your friend's cutter. That's just not good. Don't do that. Yeah. You it's know, like, I know people that. You want, you want to cut your cigar? I'm very happy to let you use my very, very awesome Jaws uh, cutter here. But. If the cigar has been in your mouth before you ask me, this stays in my pocket. Right yeah, I know there. some people will, you know, lick the cap to make sure it doesn't, I don't know, break or something. But it, I mean, I, it's not my deal. I don't. I'm not a fan of that. It, no. it just looks strange to but be you've licking seen a this, cigar. Right? Oh you've yeah. Seen it, yeah, and it's like I get the the logic behind it, and it might it might work, it might not. I don't know. I don't, know. I've I, seen I people, don't really have I've a lot seen of people lick issues the entire with thing. I've seen oh, people, gosh. you know, lick the entire cigar, and they they you know they're they're thinking they're being hot. Actually, I, I, heard, <laughs> just, I think it was it's disturbing. I heard a story. I think it was uh, Jimmy Fallon was talking about going to a cigar lounge with Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm -hmm. and Arnold Schwarzenegger gave him these rules like, "Don't do this, don't do that." And one of them was like, "Don't lick the cigar." He's like, "What are you supposed to? I heard you're supposed to do that." It's like something that non-cigar -sm smokers right. do, to, right? Right. Because they think, "Oh yeah, it'll keep them much." No, just don't don't lick the cigar. It just looks bizarre for one. Right. But, and but I don't think it's going to help your smoke. It's not going to help it. It might know. slow the burn, but really it's it's designed well, to not be licked. And the reality <laughs> is stuff burns better when it's not wet. Mm -hmm. Okay? So by, you know, getting it wet before you light it, it's going to burn funny. The blender did not lick the cigar when yeah. he was blending it. So, right. like, why, so why should you? Changing it, you think you're going to improve it? Exactly. No, so, so don't do that. Don't lick your cigar and then use somebody else's cutter. If you want to do that, use your own cutter. Who am I to judge? I don't really want to see but, somebody licking it. Like it just don't be doing that and then it. asking somebody else for their cutter or go use a store or a lounge a slobber cutter. cutter. You're at. <laughs> yeah, those are you know we call them slobber cutters mm -hmm. and those are not used by anybody. Yeah, I, I keep a cutter in my car that. I won't use, right. <laughs> but if somebody if one of our wants to use it, sure, go ahead. Oh my goodness! Maybe I'll clean it. <laughs> um, do we have a highlight for the week? We do, week? and it, we no, have our Ashholes hashtag yep, back. As, as we mentioned last week, the Ashholes hashtag is back. Um, in addition to, you know, we can still use Ashholes Radio hashtag. Uh, right. That's still us, but you know, we have the Ashholes uh, hashtag, which is working great. 
Uh, so the highlight this week is another, uh, you know, long-term fan. Okay. Uh, his name is Forrest Vess. Forrest Vess. Forrest Vess is quite the name. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure what region that's from, but uh, it's the his Instagram name is Forrest Vess. So that's F O R R E S T V E S S. Uh, he's another one that has, you know, excellent shots. Very great. Very pictures, great. Yeah. You know, another, you know, sets the standard. He often posts uh, cigars with pairings. Right. So, which is great. You know, a little bit more information for you. It's like, oh, you have this cigar already? Check out this, you know, beer or, or whiskey yeah. or whatever. Yep. Uh, so, I, I think that kind of information is always great to have because, you know, you don't have you, you don't have a lot of uh, resources in your own mind to pair things that you haven't tried yet. Right. You know, it's like you right. can only make associations with things you've had. Right. So, you know, check out Forest Vest. Give you some pairing ideas. Uh, give you some inspiration for your shots if you're into that kind of thing. But, you know, in general, just a, you know, great Instagrammer in the cigar world. Right. And, you know, something we don't often talk about is, you know, what are our own things? I mean, if people want to follow us, I mean, we've got, you know, thousands and thousands of people downloading the show. If you want to follow myself, for instance, you can follow me at Sacred Smokes. Uh, on Instagram, mm-hmm. and I'm posting stuff all the time. I'd love to hear from you if you're a uh, Ash Holes fan. And I'm at Aaron in Sight. So it's Aaron underscore in underscore Sight. S I G H T. You know, when I Where made that, that name. Where does that name come from? Well, you know, I actually was capitalized. I, I saw an opportunity, and I was like, yep. oh, I'm going to do get everything kind of on the same page mm-hmm. with my social media. So I have Aaron in Sight, and then I have a Twitter, which I don't use. I don't use Twitter at all. At but, all. But I, I do have the name Aaron in short. Aaron in short. Because it's, you know, it's <laughs> short, short format, whatever. Michelle uh, would be very it, disappointed that you don't use Twitter. Yeah. It's, it's, it, I just, I don't see the point in Twitter. It's, it's you know, we, we have Facebook that does essentially the same thing. Mm-hmm. Twitter in the day when it was texting you, it made sense. Right. Nowadays, it's, I think it's on the decline. I think it's going to go away eventually. Really? Yeah. But, uh, but uh, you know, I, I made the, my names all kind of go together oh, kind of go together you know yeah. branding for no mm-hmm. reason because i have no intent on branding myself you know, yeah yeah <laughs> but you know i thought it was clever at the time <laughs> but yeah so i, I post semi-regularly you know yeah a couple yeah, times no. a week or every couple times a week a couple times a week yeah yeah so anybody out there you want to follow us we'll follow you back give us a give us a shout out to yeah. that all right well we got to get some more into this cigar mm-hmm. but um it is time for us to get into our break so We're going to keep smoking. We're going to let you listen to some commercials here. And when we come back, we're going to get more into this cigar, the Julius Caesar Toro. Hope you come back. time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends, the Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX. The Sereno Royale Maduro XX, named number one cigar of 2016 by the Ashholes Radio Podcast, is a creation of elegance and sophistication. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, the Sereno Royale Maduro XX comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez. Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Serena. To create this masterpiece, a blend of filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a dark and luxurious Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro wrapper grown from the famed Habano 2000 seed to bring you an endlessly complex and full-bodied experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allow the blend to marry, creating unmistakable notes of rich cocoa, leather, and coffee that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating the next draw. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available at TwoGuysCigars.com. It was 2010 on my 50th birthday. Nick Perdomo from Perdomo Cigars showed up in my office and honored me with a gift. It was a box of cigars. But this box of cigars was not what I expected, one I never saw before, something without the Perdomo name on it. It was my name, Garofalo. Garofalo Cigars has my name on it, but it was blended and created by Perdomo as a gift, a gift of a brand of cigars. So what should you expect from a Garofalo cigar? Rich layers of complex flavors, but often in a mild to medium body profile. 
a blend comprised of fine Cuban seed Nicaraguan tobaccos, including a triple fermented five-year-aged Connecticut shade wrapper. I'm honored to have Garofalo, my name, surrounding such a wonderful cigar. I would be honored if you would give a Garofalo cigar a try. Garofalo Cigars, an honor. Cigar smokers, how about if we go over a few cigar store sounds? Can you guess what this is? You think you got it? Okay, do you know what this is? Now for the cigar. What do you think of this cigar? I'm lighting up a La Giana Havana cigar. The La Giana Havana natural cigars are, oh yeah, so smooth. And oh yeah, the Maduro version is a bit beefed up. But oh yeah. They're delicious, too. When asked what my favorite cigar is, I always say, it's La Giana Havana. Oh, yeah. In a world where the success of a cigar brand is recognized by its flavor, comes two that go head to head. One man smoking two cigars at the same time. Two rappers united in name, but separated by taste. One cigar known as the natural. The natural is no lightweight. It boasts full flavor and taste. The United Cigar Natural. Now comes the Maduro. Darker and even more bolder. With in-your-face flavor. United Cigar. Nothing could prepare you for what awaits you in the box. Both box-pressed. Both 65 million years in the making. Uh, that may be wrong. Well, I'm going with it anyway. Action. Adventure and bromance. That's right. Bromance. United Cigar. Available in natural or Maduro. Available only at appointed United Cigar retailer shops nationwide. Rated D for delicious. Under 18, not admitted even with a parent. United Cigars. You don't have to choose. Smoke them both. In 1848, in honor of the English poet Lord Byron, a cigar brand named Byron was first created. Through three centuries, Byron has gone through many hands, but today it is back with the family that first created them. Returning to the early days, now the brand, in a very limited quantity, is produced in a small factory in Costa Rica. Nelson Alfonso offers three Byron blends honoring all three centuries of Byron, Siglo 19, Siglo 20, and Siglo 21. Other cigars sit in an aging room for 60 days, but every Byron cigar sits in an aging room for a period of at least one full year. Then, and only then, into ultra-luxurious porcelain jars and state-of-the-art cigar humitubes packaging. Sure, Byron's packaging is unique and costly to produce, but nothing else will do for a cigar of this quality and taste. Byron Cigars. Cigars of poetry. Sophisticated. Byron. And welcome back to the Ash Holes. You can find us on iHeartRadio, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, and Podbean. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at the Ash Holes and on Instagram at Ash Holes Radio. We are smoking the Julius Caesar Toro by Diamond Crown Cigars, J.C. Newman. And we are really, really enjoying this oh, yes. smoke. There's cocoa here. I'm, there's almost like this coffee. Yeah, maybe. Yep. And you know this, um, you know, in the retro, there's uh, some cinnamon going on. It's, it's this nice floral, and, and it's, it, this is just a fantastic, very complex, very balanced mm -hmm. cigar. Yeah. Instead of coffee, I was going to say more like a dark chocolate cocoa, like a like a yeah. like a hot chocolate that you had for like with mm -hmm. the dark chocolate. You can get those all those weird blends and stuff. You, you can, can get, get all those weird blends, but yeah. it's it's like a dark chocolate hot cocoa. Right. Right. Yeah, I can def. I can. The cocoa is definitely there. Yeah, very smooth. Very, that spice. You know, and some, you know, there's in the retro. There's, you know, uh, some leather, maybe some cedar going on. Um, uh, roasted nuts. Mm. I am having to fight a little bit to keep it lit. It seems, but uh, it, it is correcting mm. itself. Uh, yeah. But I, I, I can't go too long between puffs, and it starts getting a little. Uh, this has a, a pretty know. firm draw. Yeah, it's it's a pretty firm draw. It's it good. It's you know not so tight that it's you know 
a chore to pull on it, but um, I think that does have something to do with the fact that yeah. you got to kind of keep going. I would probably this is dense. Yeah, I would probably keep it at a, a lower humidity than the, more like a like a, a thicker leaf. You know, right. you keep it like at sixty five percent rather than like a full seventy. So probably help with those burn issues. Well, actually, it's not really. I can't even say it's a burn issues because it's not a construction. It's just no. I the cigar the, for me has been burning. And great. it is a, a kind of a humid day. We had a lot of rain going oh on. Oh my so. gosh, yeah. Um, but it's old. So we don't have any uh, viewer mail this week, but what I wanted to do is kind of put put it out there for people who you know are watching the show to encourage you to write in specifically because, as we mentioned earlier in the show, about a month from now is our anniversary episode. We will have been on for one year on November 15th. Wow. November 15th is our anniversary episode. Time flies. And um, we would love to know what you would like us to do for that show uh, and, you know what you know what was uh what was the stupidest thing we ever done um, or said what was the, the, we'll get a lot the lamest the lamest fact that needed <laughs> because we're gonna highlight that we're gonna bring that up for we'll our, bring our that one up, year. Yeah. that'll be the best <laughs> you know what was your what was the favorite th favorite part of whatever episode it was uh, what do you think the best review who was the best guest mm -hmm. you know or you know what other ideas might you have for uh, our anniversary episode. We'd yeah. love to hear from you. And um, if you request another naked episode, it's not going to happen. It'll be November. It's too cold here. <laughs> it's just, just not doing it. It's a little too nipply now. Yeah. This and we don't want to like ruin this new set. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had to burn the last one. Out, so that was it. This is the last. Straw. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, um, Ash Hole of the Week. Ash Hole of the Week. Um, uh, I've been in education in the past. You're in education now. Yep. Uh, so this is this is I think something that we'll be able to talk about. Uh, Dr. Richard Watson, a professor at the University of Georgia, is allowing students to choose their own grades if they are unduly hurt or stressed out by the low grade that they got. And you can actually go to his online syllabus and explains that this uh, policy has been put in place because, quote, emotional reactions to stressful situations can have profound consequences for all involved. What, what that has to do with Gosh. education, I'm not exactly sure. But the syllabus states that if a student doesn't like the grade that they received, they can email him indicating what grade they think is appropriate, and it will be so changed with no explanation needed. <laughs> what is this? In addition, doing? what class? In is addition, this? this guy only allows positive comments in class. There's no criticism in his class. So no learning. Not even positive criticism. Criticism is not allowed in class, and you can only you you can only criticize or say something negative about somebody's work or presentation through email or online, but you can't do it in class in front of other people. That is a no-no. And um, uh, he is, you know, for those reasons, not, you know, to he's, allow well, he's students... He's not an educator. <laughs> to allow students to, who earned a C or maybe a B or a C or a D or an F to then say, I want a C or a B or an A because your grade stresses me out. Because that completely undermines the entire point of the education system. I am nominating Dr. Richard Watson as the ash hole of the week. See, this, this bothers me in particular because I actually do work with students with emotional mm -hmm. issues. With, with There's traumas, there's, you know, it's just... Uh, some with autism, and they can, mm -hmm. just can't process things the same way. Right. Uh, and we don't do this. <laughs> we don't say, oh, you, you can't, you know, you're upset, so oh, let me change your grade. Yeah. It's like, no, we, we give them the tools that they need to yeah. properly, you know, deal with it, to 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 grow. Right. You know, to, to help them along the way. But in no way do we say, oh, just do whatever you want, or, you know, we're just going to give in to those whims, because that causes way more problems down the line. It now, this does. is college, so kids, if there are students that are having this much of a meltdown, they've already been told yes way too many times in their life to begin with. True. But 
they are not being prepared for the real world. Yeah, and and this is college. That's one of my biggest problems with it. The people who are there, you, you don't have. There's no requirement to go to college. You've paid to go to college, and you are paying for an education, and this completely wastes all the money that's being spent on it. it yeah. What is the point of going and sitting in class and doing all that work and or not doing any work? Because this is what people will yeah. do. We know it's what people will do. If I know all I need to do to get an A in the class is to write saying, I'm sorry, but I am really stressed out and perturbed. I'm you know, having to drink because I can't take the fact that you gave me an F. I want an A, and there's no explanation needed for that, and that's automatically going to happen. I've completely wasted my money and lost out on the whole point of, of being there in the first place. I don't even like when professors do a curve. Mm. I mean, when I was in college, I busted my butt. I right. was shooting for four hours and everything. And if there was there was a couple of times where I would complete a paper or a, a test, and my grade I would have points deducted with no reason given whatsoever just because of the curve. And it would infuriate right. me. It's oh, like, that ticked me it's off like too, yeah, yeah, sir, I still got the A, but it's like you took off like six points just because someone else at the bottom end of the class wasn't doing so well. Right. And it's like, well, somebody was able to do all the work, so right. it should be acceptable right. for everybody. Instead, right. Now, if everyone gets a low grade, I get the curve. Mm -hmm. But this, it's just insane. Yeah. It bothers yeah. me. Yeah. You know, life is, <laughs> life is about problems and challenges and overcoming those things. And, you know, one of the places you learn the skills to deal with that is in school. And, you know, by taking that away, you are really uh, undermining, you know, a, a person's ability to deal with stress in any situation, yeah. let alone the classroom. Uh, so you're fired. Oh, but that really hurts my emotions. That, that hurts my feelings. So how about I'm not yeah. fired? Yeah. Like, no, yeah. you're really fired. Sorry. <laughs> That doesn't it doesn't work in real life. Yeah, it doesn't work in real life. In no basis of reality. <laughs> we get so you know I you know my middle daughter Anna she is you know she has em emotional learning disabilities too, and so I completely get this. You mm -hmm. know you, it, you really do have to teach differently, and she can't do everything uh, that maybe a, a student without her difficulties could do as easily, mm -hmm. right? But she still has to work. Yeah. I still want her to work. And, and actually, if she and if she ends up getting a, a B or a C because she deserved it, you know, I, I want that. But I, I want to be able to, you know, help her work through that and improve and get to the point where she gets that B or that A. Yeah. And in my field, it's like the, we know the worst thing you can do is just give into it. Right. It's like if they have a, you know, so you give a student a bad grade, they have a meltdown, they start crying, stuff like that. You change their grade. It's going to be 10 times worse next time. Right. You could never give them a bad grade again because you're going to keep and they'll get worse and worse and worse and it just ruins their life. So it's right. like you stick to your guns, you, you help them every way you can, mm. but if you start caving in just because people are having a hard time, it's like, well, listen, life is hard. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Two things are true in life. You're always going to have problems. Mm -hmm. All right. And when you solve the problems you have, they're going to be replaced by new problems. They're probably worse than the ones that you had. That's how life works. Okay? So don't be trying to, to think that you can take the problem away by re, you know, just changing the grade and magically it goes away. That isn't how it works. Yeah. If you think having a meltdown is going to solve your problems, you're going to have more problems. Right. So it's it's not right. helping anybody. And it's it's hurting our workforce. <laughs> All right. There <laughs> if you more go. professors did that, we'd be in trouble. Asshole of the week. Absolutely. All right. Now, last week, we, you know, had Hurricane Iris come through mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah, Harvey and, the week before that. You know, um, Michelle, you know, this week, you know, during our episode, she's flying back to Hawaii. So, obviously, she's not listening to the show. She, you know, didn't have her Miles of Styles in because she's going back to Hawaii. Wish her uh, um, safe travels and all that. Um but we have something we wanted to talk about. In light of the fact that, we, you know, it's hurricane season. We had Hurricane Harvey a few weeks ago. Iris last week. If you were in a shelter and you could only take one box of cigars with you or one particular cigar with you, what would you take? It's a tough question. Particularly because you don't know what kind of environment you're going to be dealing with. Are you going to be flooded? Are you going to be, you know, are you going to have to keep them dry or... Is it right. going to be humid or, or what? 
Um, I would probably go with a bandolero. A bandolero? Yeah. I, I, I think it's going to hold up well in any kind of environment, whether it's, say, you, you've lost your humidor. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, there you go. So even if it, 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 it's going to last a little longer, even if it gets a little dried out or if it gets a little bit too humid, it's still going to hold up well. That's just my experience with the, that, the bandolero line, really. I don't, the size doesn't matter to me. Which Those are fantastic. But spoilers, uh, yeah. I think that would be my go-to, just because I feel like it's it's gonna pull through. Yeah. Um, and it's a great smoke. It is a great <laughs> smoke. It's a great smoke. Um, look, you know my my favorite cigar that for the last twenty years has been, you know, a, a Padron Exclusivo Maduro. I would wrap those in bags and put them on my body <laughs> and, and take them with, on your body. With, yeah. I just very consistent, very nice cigar. Um, if I could, if it was, if I'm on the desert island around, that's the last cigar I'm going to be able to smoke. That's that's what I'd want it to be. All right, it's a solid smoke. Yeah. Now, if you listeners out there have ideas, what would your cigar be? What would you take with you, or do you disagree Shelter with the Bandolero, or if you disagree with the Padron, um, you, why you, didn't you let can't us know. disagree? No, that w- that would hurt our feelings. So you can disagree. If you, you cannot. Want. You cannot disagree. You're free to disagree. <laughs> But you're also free to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, have your okay. own. Um, so, <sighs> what are you thinking with this cigar? You know, I'm still kind of fighting the burn here. Yeah, uh, but I, I think mine I, actually went out. Yeah, I've been talking a lot. So I'm thinking, you know, we got really nailed with some rain today, mm. so it's probably just a little bit more humid than usual in here. Uh, probably affecting it, but. You know, still getting some great flavor, even with it kind of almost going out and having to fight it. It doesn't. It doesn't. When I do have to give it a couple of puffs, it's not getting bitter on me. Right. I'm still getting that chocolate, that cocoa flavor, and still a little bit of the um, that floral, you know, flavor. It's hard. Definitely. Floral definitely. is such a you know a weird one to say because you know you can't say it smell. It tastes like this flower. Or yeah. It's, it's not nothing, like it's it just smells floral like roses. in general. Yeah. You know, because it's it's not really a specific flavor, but it it's. Mm-hmm. When you taste it, you know it. So. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm still getting a lot of. Um, it's almost like a mocha. Yep. Kind of flavor now, and um, some woody and and uh, um, cedar and spice on the retro. Mm. Very, very nice. Um, very smooth. Kind of a, a very li- smooth. The spice is kind of a like a a licorice or an mm-hmm. anise. You know that mm-hmm. kind of. Almost not a, a sweet spice, but it, it's yeah. There's a very sweetness. Distinct. There's a sweetness to it. But it's not but like it's, a <laughs> like on your tongue. It's more like on the tip of your tongue, more like a yeah. like a not salty, but a, you know, it's a sweetness that you you taste, but it doesn't really hit the sides of your tongue like a normal right. sweetness does. Mm. So that's why I would think more like licorice, that kind of realm. Yeah, licorice. Licorice is coming to my mind now. I can I can pick that up. That's not normally something I associate with cigars. I go to it a lot. <laughs> I know. We all have, That's you know, we all have our, we all have our go-to things. But yeah. This, you because know, I, the, I don't taste leather. Yeah. I don't go Cocoa, leather. the 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 uh, licorice. I'm totally picking that up. I'm still thinking there's some kind of coffee component here, and hence I'll say mocha. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's not, you know, not chocolate, but like a cocoa kind of a uh, flavor. Yeah. But, that darkly baking chocolate. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But not bitter. No, no very it's not smooth, at all. Very, very well balanced. Too. Very sweet. Um, lots of smoke coming off this thing. Mm. And um, uh, you know, other than you know, I think talking a lot. It you know, being you know, just the two of us. You know, if Oliver were, were here, his cigar would be going out because he'd be talking so much. Yeah. Oh but well, he'd be that, nubbed already. He'd be, <laughs> he'd be, he yeah, he'd like be nubbed already. Yeah. Hey, it's <laughs> funny. You know, now that he's gone, I think I'm smoking slower. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Maybe <laughs> he makes more. me smoke he faster talk than more. I normally yeah. do. We barely uh, talked at all yeah. when uh, Christopher uh, Rowe was here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think I spoke ten words. I think I did, you know, the intro, the outgo, and all that. And that was yeah. basically I mean, it. it. We were here to listen to him, so, I mean, it was great. But uh, I appreciated not having to talk too much. But right. I was able to get through the cigar. Oh, my. So, um, thinking about what you would give the cigar, would you would you recommend this? I would definitely recommend it. it. Just even though you know, right now we're having some murder shit. I've had it before, and right. I know it, it it holds up very well. Uh, that it's not typical that we have it going out on you. Right. Um. I mean, the the perfecto is you know 
excellent cigar. Yeah, That's I love the Perfecto. Perfecto. You should go for that. Uh, but this actually has a little bit more complexity, I think, mm-hmm. than the Perfecto. Yeah. Uh, you get a lot of the nut, okay. and then you kind of go straight into the more of the licorice kind of flavors. It's mm-hmm. just because it's a shorter cigar. Sure. So there's only so much flavor you can fit in that length. Uh, it's amazing. But this, I feel like it's got more complexity, uh, more transitions, where it just kind of builds up that, that floral note, which mm-hmm. isn't really present on the Perfecto size. Okay. Um, so thumbs up for you. Yeah, absolutely. Thumbs up. Big thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm also going with a thumbs up with this cigar. It is a great, great smoke. It's a go-to for me, um, you know, especially as, as, you know, we've been talking about, you know, the weather getting colder and everything. This is a favorite winter smoke for me. It just it, it, It's those kind of cocoa mocha flavors. Yeah. It just goes great with the holidays. It's a fantastic cigar. Yeah, those, cigar those seasons way. are you, like, crave those. Yeah, those flavors. those flavors. You really, you really like So it, speaking of that, actually, you know, we're – Talking about uh, you know a little bit of weather and things like that. Is there a certain flavor or type of cigar that you go to in different weather? Mm. So when that, it gets hot out, when it gets cold out. You know. That's a good question. I have not thought consciously about that. Um, obviously, I just kind of stepped into it by saying that I smoke this in the in the winter time. Um, I tend to. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a medium to full mm-hmm. uh, bodied cigar smoker pretty much all the time. Yep. And I'll you know go, I, I'll go mild. You know, whether it's a, a regular Diamond Crown or a, um, a Garofalo or a, um, a La, uh, La Giana mm-hmm. or even a La Galera. Yeah, I love the La Galeras. The, uh, I think the just, La Galera actually just got a 91 rating. Really? In uh, it was the Maduro, I believe. Okay. They got a 91 rating on Cigar Journal. So that's that, fantastic. That's great. You know, the I love – yeah, their Connecticut real attention. is just, to me, fantastic. It's like sautéed butter. I, I love that cigar. Mm. Um, I, and so, you know, I guess, you know, those kind of things I, I do in the summer. The Perdomo um, Connecticut 20th anniversary just came out. That's a great warm-weather cigar. Mm-hmm. It's nice. It's it, – um, uh, a, a Padron um, – 1926 series. That's a great summer cigar for me. It's a great winter cigar too. See, for me in the hot weather, I tend to go for more of a mild, more of a mild. Yeah, mild, milder smokes. And when it gets it starts getting cool or at night, that's when I go for the, like, the right. cooler body. So this this may be this may be more noticeable in, in in what you pick during the week. What what are some summer cigars for you? Oh, uh, like the Sealy Shell. Mm-hmm. Like a, that's a go-to all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mentioned the the asylum, right? In Connecticut, right? Uh, you know, the Garofalo, Garofalo, Connecticut, Garofalo, mm-hmm. um, the Sun Grown, right? You know, they've got a little bit more spice there. Uh, you know, I just I, I float around uh, between cigars a lot, so it's you know, when I say a go to, a lot of times it means once or twice a month. Okay. Uh, yeah. There's some that are, you know, at least once or twice a week even. Mm-hmm. So like the, the CLE shell, I do like once or twice a week. Oh, wow. So that's like box okay. for me. It's yeah. Because I know that it's going to be solid every time. And, mm-hmm. I, and if it's hot out, I'm definitely going to enjoy it. Um, but then, you know, and I have plenty. It, my, I stick more to like a medium right. flavor range. So like when it's particularly hot, I go for a mild. When it's particularly cooler night or I'm going to sit by the fire I'll go for the full body okay but then like on a regular spring or fall day I'm going to go with something more yeah yeah no that makes sense I get that I'll have to think about that and you know maybe I'll have more to say next week um how do you compare this with other sizes in the uh, Julius Caesar line uh, you know they make a six by 60 the Hale Caesar mm-hmm. they, the Perfecto Gusto the, the Churchill size too have you had all those sizes I haven't had every size but I've had a you know the mm-hmm. buster and stuff like that. Um, it seems that the sweetness is a little bit, a little bit more sweetness on some of the other sizes. Mm-hmm. And so th- the others tend to be more nutty. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, this is more of the chocolatey, you know, cocoa kind right, of flavors. Right, right. Um, I mean, it's, it's all there. Do you have a favorite Julius really Caesar? The Perfecto. The Perfecto. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's and it's, I'm a schedule guy, so it's like <laughs> I, you know I got to squeeze in a cigar when I can some days. Uh, and so knowing that I can finish it with in under an hour right, right. <laughs> is a big selling point for me, uh, and the, to be able to enjoy the whole yeah. thing. For me, it's a really toss up between this, the Toro size, and the, and the Perfecto. They're both just they're very 
different. Mm -hmm. uh, like what we've noted, there are uh, very different taste notes in, in both. Um, while the you know the blends are basically the same, but the, the perfecto shape does a lot with you know changing how you interpret the blend that's there. But um, this is one of my favorite. Yeah, and you know while we're talking, sizes. it seems the burn has fixed itself. Like it's it, not that I was burning wavy or anything, mm -hmm. but uh, you know I'm not having to fight it to keep it lit anymore. So mm -hmm. it was just a spot, and that tends to be humidity. Is what I find is that. Things yeah, that, over -humidified that has a or, lot. It has a lot to do it's, with it's how that, the cigar It's that burns. like five inch mark where it's you, you have to fight it right. to get through that. So next week Oliver's going to be back with us. Some of you are saying thank God. Others of you are saying, uh, uh, when's he going away again? Don't worry about it. He'll be gone again soon. Yeah, we'll kick him out. Okay. <laughs> but uh, next week when he's back, we're going to be smoking the Florida de Lorraine Sink in the uh, Natural. Uh, that's going to be a great cigar. Oh, I love yeah. that. That's a great one. Nice medium body. Yeah, yeah. Very, very nice. Another shorter, shorter cigar. Yep. Okay. Looking forward to that. Yes. So. We'll give you a little update on how the uh, anniversary party went. So hopefully yeah, we'll we, have we lots survive. of stories. I think we'll have a lot from uh, Oliver. from A lot of uh, he's been cigar liberties. <laughs> meeting, doing all over the country and everything. But for now, uh, it's time for us to wrap up. You've been listening to the Ash Holes Unfiltered Cigar Radio, broadcasting live from the Serena Royale stage at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, where we turn every Wednesday into Ash Wednesday. And you can download this and any other episodes you may have missed on iHeartRadio, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, and Podbean. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at the Ash Holes and on Instagram at Ash Holes Radio. We'll see you next week. Thank you.